Hey guys, what's up? It's Kashmir Gets Voted Out, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different than usual, which is my personal top 20 total drama episodes. Now, as you can see, I have this beautiful Reddit image <laughs> up on the screen that represents all of the past original seasons of Total Drama, which will be included in this video, as well as the first season of the Total Drama reboot. Now, it's actually been revealed that Season 2 is already releasing in Italy, starting December 4th, and so I don't know if an English version is going to be leaked like it was for the first season, but I will be trying to avoid spoilers if there's no English version that gets released, and it's just in Italian. Uh, I don't even want to watch with English subtitles, so hopefully the English dub comes out soon. Uh, I, like, I like that nowadays we can talk about total drama as if it's an anime. Uh, but anyways, we're still waiting for season one to even air in the United States, so who knows what's happening with that shit show. But I wanted to release this video before season two of the reboot comes out so I don't have to make any hard cuts or decisions because I don't want to have to change my list. It was already hard enough to make. Um, but anyways, with all, with all of that out of the way, I wanted to release this video finally because it's been a long time since I've uploaded because school has been kicking my ass. But I'm finally almost done, so I want to celebrate Season 2 of the reboot coming out very soon with a celebration of Total Drama as a whole with my top 20 episodes. Um, and as per usual, this video is just my opinion, so I want to know your opinions in the comments below and your opinions on my opinions. It's like opinion inception. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump into some drama. Now, starting right away at number 20, I'm already starting off with the spoiler alert, so if you still haven't seen the first season of the Total Drama Reboot, you can back out now. But the uh, without further ado, my number 20 spot on the list is Drowntown Abbey from the Total Drama Reboot. Now, other episodes I was considering for this spot were Masters of Disasters from TDA and the finale of Revenge of the Island, but ultimately I decided to stick with my guns and choose this episode, even if my reasoning isn't super thorough. But the reason I like this episode so much is probably just because of the main hype factor. Like, I was super hyped to watch the season when it was first leaked and I hadn't been spoiled on anything yet. So it was just really exciting to watch the early episodes of the reboot so I could learn more about these characters that had designs that really intrigued me. And made me months and months on end maybe question what they could be about. So, spoiler alert for the rest of the list, but my favorite reboot episodes are pretty much all of the early ones. Due to how well I think they introduced all of the characters. And in this episode... Um, Priya's whole deal and backstory is introduced uh, with her parents and how they don't want her to go to med school, which I think is a really funny subversion, because it, and it still makes me scream every time. Uh, so Priya and Millie's storyline is introduced at the start of this episode with good pacing, uh, as well as us getting some scenes of Michelle's um, giant ego um, when the other contestants like Wayne, Raj, and Emma are fawning over her. And once we get to the challenge section, it is all pretty standard. And my one gripe with this episode is that the Obstacle Force challenge is really bare bones and uncreative. Um, and so the it has to rely completely on the characters to carry it. But thankfully the characters here are pretty great with Scary Girl absolutely stealing the show with her tossing around the bear that, like it was shown in the advertisement. And I remember pointing and screaming at the screen when that scene came up because I'd forgotten about it until then. And I saw it in the ads. But um, Michelle is also really funny in this episode and she really steals the show because... Um, her failing on the course and being extremely melodramatic about the whole situation is probably one of the funniest sequences in the reboot, and I really like that they kept it as a joke in there, especially when she's yelling at Jerry at the end. It's, like, super funny. And um, although it was super polarizing the first time I watched it, I've really come to appreciate Nichelle as the true drama queen that she is, and I think she was able to shine a decent bit for being an early boot, definitely more than, like, Amy or B, I would say, in comparison. And I do think she'll get more expansion and screen time in the second season to make up for it, so... Um, yeah, this episode is over, um, sorry, I'm stumbling over my words, but overall this episode squeezes in at the number 20th spot on the list just due to how well it introduced all the characters and, and span, expands on them, um, and how much it lived up to the hype I had of it in my head. Now, uh, coming in next in 19th place is Chinese Fake Out from Total Drama World Tour, and I'm really not sure how people feel about this episode, but to me it really encapsulates the best of World Tour, which is like the late middle portion of the game to the end. And a lot of the characters are at their best here in this section of the season for me, like Heather, Alejandro, Duncan, and even Blainley, who honestly steals the show in this episode. Like, she's really funny for basically no reason, like karate chopping Heather and cheating with Chef in the eating competition and yelling at everyone to get over it. Like, she's like, get over it! <laughs> like, her comedic time is extremely underrated, and I actually really like her inclusion this season, even though it was kind of wasted. Um, the gross eating episode in this challenge, or the gross eating challenge in this episode, is also probably the best one in the series for me, although that might not be a very high bar to clear. Um, and the song Chinese Lesson makes it actually enjoyable in a cringy sort of way. Like, don't get me wrong, the song is absolutely awful, but it's a funny kind of awful that I love to sing along to. And 
Okay, I might be insane, but is it just me who thinks that some of the food looks good, though? Like, the donkey meat and that starfish was looking kind of tasty. Like, I can't even lie. Um, I might be clinically insane, but that's okay. Um, I also love Heather calling out Blainly for... Uh, Blainly and Alejandro for cheating. Like, once again, proving that she deserved this win this season by calling out everyone's bullshit all the time. And um, I also think Courtney's elimination here is really justified. The only problem I have with this episode is that I wish they would have saved Blainly's elimination for a different episode instead of booting both her and Courtney because there's, like, non-elimination episodes later on and for the fact that they kicked Blainly off just, like, two episodes after she was introduced felt like kind of a waste. But overall, that's a small gripe for me in what otherwise is a very enjoyable and consistent episode. Hey guys, for this next one, I'm sorry if my voice sounds a bit different since I'm recording this part on another day, like three days later actually to be specific from the other parts, uh, because the cops showed up at my house looking for me, but trust me, it's fine. They tried to arrest me for downloading the new Total Drama season. No, <laughs> that part didn't happen, okay? Just kidding on that part. Um, but moving on with the list, at 18th place, this might be a controversial pick because I'm not sure if it's really that popular, but um, 18th is Oat Campture from Total Drama Island, and Yes, I did look up how to pronounce that because it's a French word and um, I'm you can't say I'm not like really prepared as a total drama YouTuber like I'm always researching okay <laughs> and um, random pet peeve but I hate when YouTubers in general are like I'm sorry I mispronounced this word I probably just butchered it and it's like you're making an edited video like just look it up <laughs> like look it up <laughs> look up how to pronounce it but anyways back to Old Kem Shore the actual episode um some might label it as a filler episode, but um, this episode actually does a great job for me of giving a behind-the-scenes look at the Eliminated contestants, and it's really entertaining to see what campers like Lindsay, Courtney, Harold, and even Ezekiel are doing at the resort. And it's super cool to see the Eliminated campers' opinions on the final five, um, especially the underutilized characters like Katie, Sadie, Eva, Izzy, and Noah. They actually get a lot of time to shine in this episode and have a lot of really funny moments, and um, if no other seasons of Total Drama existed, then this would be, like, our only, <laughs> like, foray into, like, Noah's character or, like, more of Eva and Izzy as well. So, that's great to see all those moments from the unutilized characters. And, um, this episode altogether is just very chill, and it's packed with a lot of great jokes and character moments. And this is definitely a hot take, but the Lashana elimination is actually really funny to me. And that whole sequence with the parent voting her out and everyone else accidentally saying her name, like, it's really stupid, but it's the kind of stupid that works for me, and um, no matter how unfair it is, I just think that it'll go down in history as one of the most iconic scenes in Total Drama, because, like, listen, every show has to have a little bit of mess, or a little bit of something that, like, makes the fandom mad, because then the fandom wouldn't talk about the show as much, because the most popular fandoms, or the most passionate ones, are always the ones where they, like, like the concept, but they also have, like, huge gripes with the show, and that's exactly Total Drama, and that's, like, what's kept it alive through these years. Um, but... Anyways, um, I'm actually not, even though it was unfair, it doesn't really bother me because I think Lashana should have gone in fifth place either way in TDI, and I'm just really glad we got this behind the scenes episode, and they totally could have like cut out Camp Castaways and done something different, but I don't take it that seriously, and I don't think it's like a huge problem with the season, um, even though the writing is stupid, like to me, it's just, it's the perfect amount of stupid, okay? It's the right kind of stupid for this show, and um, overall, to recap, this episode is just a really fun and chill episode to me to watch whenever, like you could even watch it out of order, and I personally think it's really underrated, so that's why I like it. Out next on the list, at the 17th spot, is the first Revenge of the Island episode to appear on this list, and it's episode 3, Ice Ice Baby. Now... I would say for the most part in the 13 episode seasons I usually prefer the earlier episodes because um, I think I just kind of like to vibe with all the characters since there's so few of them and the early episodes usually fit in a lot of great character interactions especially because most of the 13 episode seasons are new casts and for this episode in particular I really enjoy the interactions between like Joe and Anne Maria like how Joe is like manipulating her into doing well in all the challenges and actually participating and she actually ends up being like kind of overpowered because of her helmet hair and I'm like whoever came with up, <laughs> up with Anne Maria's concept character concept is so weird because I feel like it shouldn't work at all but it kind of does um and then as for some of the other interactions there's like Don and Scott and listen I'm not a delusional shipper, but they actually have really great chemistry in this episode, and their interactions are really good. And there's also Sam and Lightning as well, who start in, like, almost rivalry in this episode, and it doesn't really happen for the rest of the season, but I think it's a good setup nonetheless. And I also like Scott sabotaging B in this episode, because B is, like, a semi-interesting character, but he can't, you know, talk, so he can only get, so he can only get so far in the game, and I feel like the, emula the elimination is a satisfying and fair one. Um, in terms of placement, not really in canon, because, you know, 
he got sabotaged, but it's fine. And, um, oh, who could forget, Dakota also returns in this episode, near the end. Um, she returns as an intern after she paraglides back onto the island in true Barbie movie fashion. <laughs> um, so it's really great to have her little scene at the end as well. And the only problem I have with this episode are problems I have with this season in general, such as focusing too much on unfunny slapstick and um, awkward or rushed opening scenes. Um, but overall, even though I'm not a huge fan of the Revenge of the Island cast, I think this episode does a good job setting them up at least. And I also really like the challenge, especially the second part with the forts, because it's one of those like creative team oriented strategy type challenges that I think are the most entertaining and uh, valuable for seeing what the new character's personalities are. So overall, this episode basically has everything you need in an early 13 episode season episode, like an engaging strategy challenge, a satisfying elimination and great character interactions. Now, next up is another reboot episode, and this one is going to be the very first episode, Meet the Victims. Now, I've seen a lot of people criticize this episode, like they say it's not a good introduction to the season, it's not a good introduction to the characters, and it's too poorly paced or too fast, but um, I think this first episode gives a really great impression to all the characters pretty much right off the bat. Um, the only ones I can say that get the short end of the stick are Michelle and Caleb, <laughs> but um, pretty much everyone else has a great audition tape that they show in the actual episode when they're coming into the boat like in on the boats and I think that was a great idea and it immediately hooks you in and makes you wonder what else the characters will do for the season and um pretty much like make sure makes it makes sure that you understand the core values of the characters and gets you hooked right away and the intros for the characters they're quick snappy and yes they are fast paced but it's not poorly paced and um characters that really stand out in this episode are Emma, Wayne and Raj, MK, Damien and especially Bowie who pulls, who pulls off an insane move right away and eliminates Caleb's dumbass when he didn't expect it and um, this definitely would have been even more shocking if like us hardcore fans didn't look at all the promo images and the ads and we're already 90% sure Caleb is going home first but um, it was great TV either way okay it was good writing for what it was and I think a lot of people criticized the challenge in this episode for being underwhelming and too fast but um, I'm kind of glad that it doesn't take up too much time and they focus more on the introduction of the characters um, and it's a very simple challenge but I like that it's a straight up survivor challenge <laughs> And um, it serves its purpose well to show Emma and Chase's arguing, but um, overall, this episode is also on the list, mainly for the hype factor. Like, it's by far the best first episode introduction for a new cast, um, and I think they pretty much knocked it out of the park. Now, next on the list, coming in at number 15, is an absolute classic episode of Total Drama Island, and that's, that's off the chain. Um, this episode starts off pretty standard. The guys are messing around and scaring the shit out of DJ. Heather is bossing around Lindsay. Izzy is trying to kill Lashana. Wait, what? Um, but this entire episode leads up to one moment, and that is LaShawn on the bike with Izzy. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's Lindsay cursing out Heather. Like, this was bold for 2007, okay? Um, but then again, the 2000s were quite unhinged. But anyways, um, even though the moments that lead up to this are complete BS and the challenge rules don't make any sense, um, Lindsay cursing out Heather is extremely satisfying and has to be in the top three best moments of the entire series. Like, Lindsay gave that bitch a piece of her mind. <laughs> And I can basically just say Lindsay curses at Heather and move on because that's how iconic this episode and entire scene is. Um, but I really love also how everyone cheers Lindsay on when she calls out Heather and they don't have any animosity towards her. Or they don't hate her because um, they know she's a dumbass. But <laughs> um, and they give her a really tearful goodbye at the end when she's walking around the dock. So um, yeah, this is episode is just simply iconic and that's all I that <laughs> This episode is so good that I'm getting flustered, but that's all I should have to say. You already know. Next up on the list in 14th place is The Princess Pride from Total Drama Action, and y'all, this episode is cracked. <laughs> like, I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna be honest, this episode is just cracked. Um, the whole theme for the episode is fairy tale movies, and I really feel like this is a very perverted fairy tale. <laughs> like, the innocence of fairy tales does not match the raunchiness of Total Drama at all. And so I feel like this actually enhances the humor by a boatload for this episode. Um, especially when Princess Courtney is trying to sing a sweet fairy tale song and she's like, My prince will have lots of money. <laughs> like it's genius and it gets me every time. Justin also majorly steps up in this episode and falls in love with Courtney. Um, Courtney originally reciprocates, but it turns out she really didn't give a shit <laughs> and was just trying to um string him along and trying to make Duncan jealous, as per usual. Um, but Justin is hilarious in this episode, especially when he betrays Harold, and this is like, and he's like, I said I was sorry, Harold. Um, he says sorry, of course, because he's Canadian. Um, Beth also, um, 
gets absolutely wrecked in this episode <laughs> when she gets typecasted as the ugly stepsister, uh, which is always nice to see. Um, but overall, this episode just represents the insanity of total drama action. Like, action is weird, guys. Like, trust me, it's weird. Next up in 13th place is Up, Up, and Away in My Pitiful Balloon. Now, this is the Final Five episode of Revenge of the Island, and the dynamic between the Final Five is pretty great in this episode. A lot has just happened in the previous episode to where there's a lot of hard feelings between the cast, like um, specifically between Zoe and Scott, as well as Joe and Lightning, and this juicy tension is shaken up by the arrival of one true bad bitch, Heather. Now, not to say that the cast is bad in this episode by any means, but Heather really steals the show and goes batshit insane in an attempt to steal the million dollars, and it really flips the episode on its head in a great way and makes the challenge way more interesting than what was planned. Um, especially because Heather is, like, the only past contestant, like, cameo-wise, to actually do something important <laughs> in the episode, besides Duncan in his episode, who, like, just showed up at the end really quick. Um, but anyways, yes, Heather really spices up this episode and, um, gives something enjoyable for the fans who do and don't like Revenge of the Island, because I think even people who don't like the season or the cast all that much, like myself, love this episode. Uh, but I don't want to put all the spotlight on Heather because Cameron is definitely the best competing contestant in this episode. Um, I feel like in Revenge of the Island, he's a very underrated protagonist because, um, I mean, amongst the fandom. Um, but in this episode, Joe bosses him around a bunch. And so he rigs the smoke machine she's holding in this picture um, to explode whenever he presses the button. And he was able to do this since he won the smoke machine in the first part. Um, and he knew Joe's bitch ass was going <laughs> to forcefully take it from him. Um, I don't know he rigged it. I don't know how he rigged it that fast, but just go with it. Um, Joe is also super funny in this episode, as, um, as per usual. Um, but either way, I respect the hell out of Cameron in this episode for being a main protagonist and still having the balls to pull an absolute savage move like this, um, which ultimately caused him to win immunity in the challenge and vote out Joe with like so. Coming in at number 12 is Twinning Isn't Everything from Pakistan Island, everybody's favorite season. <laughs> Um, Amy and Sammy steal the show in this episode, but before that, I want to talk just a little bit about the other characters and scenes in this episode, uh, before I get to the meat and potatoes of it all. Um, being a Pakateo episode, I would expect the other characters to distract from the amy Sammy plot. Uh, everybody in this episode is pretty good all around. Um, Sean and Jasmine are actually pretty cute at this point, and Sky and Dave haven't gotten really annoying yet, so in a vacuum, their storylines are actually a bit intriguing for this episode. Um, Scarlet and Max also have some nice build-up and laughs in this episode, but anyways, back to the meat and potatoes. Um, this episode starts out with Jasmine and Sammy foraging for berries for their team, uh, because for some reason in this season they're not even being fed, <laughs> but moving on. Um, Jasmine gives Sammy some good advice and tells her to stand up to her sister, and this originally backfires when Sammy yells at Amy in front of the team, uh, and because most of them are idiots, uh, they believe Amy when she fake cries. Um, but Sammy is able to snap back because another one of my ultimate favorite total drama scenes happens next. Um, I can't believe I'm saying that about this mess of a season. Um, but Sammy, si you know what, it's similar to Cameron now that I think about it. Um, she knows that Amy will snatch the poisonous fruit from her hand that she learned about earlier from Jasmine. And this causes Amy to choke at the elimination ceremony like she deserves. And um, well, Sammy swaps places with Amy and pretends to be her. It's all very confusing, and they even point this out in canon when everyone comes back and they're very confused about it. Um, I don't know how Chris and the production team even let this happen, but I'm not complaining because this entire sequence is one hell of a scene and one of the best. Next up on the list at number 11 is the infamous episode from World Tour, I See London. This is one of the most talked about episodes in the whole series, mostly due to this being the episode where Duncan returns into the competition and he kisses Gwen. That's right, they kiss. On the mouth. Well, Duncan was Courtney. And Tyler saw it. <laughs> but hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up, hold up a second. Let's pump the brakes. What actually happens in the entire episode? Well, we have a mystery horror theme challenge, which pretty much always goes well in total drama for me. Um, Jack the Ripper, aka Ezekiel, captures Alejandro in the beginning of the episode, and this allows Owen, Noah, and Tyler to have some time alone without Alejandro eating up all their screen time and bossing them around. And this also allows Noah to open up to Owen about how he thinks that Alejandro is an eel dipped in grease and how not to trust him, but this comes back to bite him because for some reason Alejandro was allowed to see what everyone was doing, but anyway. Oh, and it's also really interesting to see Noah kind of step up and be the team leader since Alejandro is not there, and Owen and Tyler are mostly incompetent, and it's really funny to see Noah try to lead the team while he's and like find out the Ripper situation and win the challenge for his team, because uh, he's usually a very big slacker. And, um, 
but he actually catches the Ripper type guy, you know, Ezekiel, <laughs> and he should have won the challenge, but oh well. He still got some time to shine. We'll talk more a little bit about his elimination early. I mean, later on, not earlier on. Um, and when the episode focuses on Team Amazon, it mostly takes time to focus on Gwen and Courtney and their budding friendship. They bond over the fact that they're basically the most competent members of their team, and they also both hate, <laughs> they both hate Heather, so that also helps. And um, the piece doesn't last long, as after incorrectly following one of the clues to the wrong location, they end up in a grungy punk club and capture Dumpier. Dun dun dun! <laughs> Now, this was definitely a shock back in the day, and as I've said before in some of my other videos, I really do not mind the love triangle plot as it comes to World Tour. I don't think this season in particular ruins the characters involved. I completely blame All-Stars for that. And um, But for this season in particular, I think it brings the drama, it brings the spice, it brings the plot twist, and it fleshes out Heather and Alejandro's rivalry a ton and gives them something to show their strategic, pow strategic prowess with. I'm sorry. Uh, the only problem I have with this episode is that even though Noah does the challenge properly, he still gets voted out here since Chris decides to make his team lose for whatever reason. Um, they vote The vote-off itself is technically all fair and square, but he only goes home because Duncan joins the team and also votes him out, and they should have won the challenge in the first place, technically. Um, I really think this wouldn't have been as annoying if they allowed him to return in that return competition where Blainley came back. And listen, I know I said I love Blainley, but like, just put them both in, okay? Just bring both of them back, okay? Let them both cook. Let them both cook. <laughs> but um, overall, I love this episode for the unique character dynamics on Team Chris, and I love to see Noah take charge. Um, I love to see Gwen and Courtney bonding, even if it doesn't last that long. I love the whole mystery horror challenge and the setting. Um, and yes, I even love the whole Duncan kissing Gwen drama. Um, because maybe this is also a hot take, but in some of the future episodes in World Tour, Gwen and Duncan actually have some nice chemistry, and they have some nice banter, and I feel like they work well together. But it's pretty much all for nothing, it's a waste, because, you know, they're not allowed to be a real couple that will last for a while, um, and just be left alone because of all this cheating nonsense. And obviously it was not right for them <laughs> to cheat on Courtney. Uh, it probably, it probably would have been a lot better if Courtney and Duncan, like, just broke up. Um, and then Gwen and Duncan get together, because it would still make sense why Courtney would be mad that her best friend just got with her ex, but then Gwen wouldn't be, like, as horrible to, like, cheat. Um, but anyways, um, I should probably stop talking before I ruin the reasons why I like this episode, but despite it being a controversial one, it is one of the most popular ones, and there is a lot to like about it, even though some stuff later on that it brings up may be unsavory, but for me, I just really love all the drama, and I love to see Noah step up because um, he doesn't get much screen time in World Tour, but when he does, I think it really shows his character well, and I really wish he could have returned. But um, yeah, this episode, it's one of the best, and it doesn't like forget the haters, okay? Forget the haters, it's one of the best. All right, guys, for this next one, we're already halfway through the list. I'm sure for you guys, it didn't take that long, but for me, it took multiple days. Uh, but, anyways, 10th place on the list is Hook, Line, and Screamer from Drama Island. Um, this episode really just encapsulates the great summer camp vibe of the first season that none of the other seasons can really replicate. And I also feel like the first season in particular took a lot of inspiration from teen movies for how they would portray the cast and the challenges, and the inspiration from cheesy teen horror movies. Um, in this episode, really fits total drama. It also fits into the whole, like, mystery slash horror challenge genre that has basically become a staple in total drama that are usually some of my favorite episodes from their respective seasons. And I was honestly really disappointed that there wasn't a challenge or setting like that in the reboot season. It was a really missed opportunity. But getting into the actual details of the episode, we have Gwen proving why she is the main girl by being the one who is most prepared to survive a slasher scenario. She absolutely wrecks the shit out of the real escaped killer with a chainsaw and a hook. Truly one of the slasher villains of all time. And the reveal that he is indeed real and wants to kill everyone, but then sashays out of there <laughs> once Gwen wrecks his shit, is just powerful. Like, it is true cinema. And there's a bunch of other iconic moments here as well, like DJ being scared shitless by Heather shaving her legs, and Owen and Izzy's little rendezvous in the woods that um, ends up with Izzy being really, really pissed at him. And when Izzy gets angry at Owen, it actually scares the shit out of me because Izzy showing emotion besides its sanity is quite unsettling. But beyond that whole thing, this episode has a really classic formula. Um, the only negative I have is that DJ's elimination is very unexplained and sudden. I know that he... It's implied that he's auto-eliminated for doing the worst in the challenge, um, but I wish they had a scene where Chris asked the contestants at the campfire, like, who do you think had the worst blunder today? <laughs> be kind of like he's having meaningless banter with them, and they all unanimously agree that DJ being scared of Heather was quite pathetic, and so Chris just boots him right then and there, 
it'd basically be Chris bringing it, but at least it would make sense then, and we all know that Chris brings it anyways, so might as well bring the subtext into the text uh, to get rid of the ambiguity. Um, but overall, this episode is just an absolute classic. It establishes a pattern for the like horror nighttime mystery episodes that are basically always good and always fit the vibe of Total Drama really well. Next, in the number 9 spot, is One Flew Over the Cuckoos from Total Drama Action. It's a goofy owl reference title, but we move. <laughs> I'm kind of out of breath right now because I just ran before I recorded this. But um, this episode starts out with both of the teams studying medical terminology for the challenge. But as per usual for Chris, it ends up just being a ruse in an attempt to basically <laughs> poison some of the contestants with laxatives and itching powder. Or just make them too tired and basically make them feel crazy and turn them into hypochondriacs that think they have all the diseases in the book, which we know thanks to Izzy. And um, DJ is also the one to help with this since this is kind of um, sort of the peak of DJ's uh, alliance with Chef. And so that's really interesting to see. It didn't get much attention in the season, but at least this episode gives a little bit to it. And I feel like if somebody <laughs> is watching this and they don't remember this episode very well, I'm not doing a very good job of summarizing. But basically, the entire second half of the episode basically focuses on LaShawn and Duncan as they try to figure out what's going with all, on with all of the contestants who are um, having like mysterious diseases and symptoms that they've supposedly contracted. And they're trying to figure out if it's real or not, as LaShawn especially is very suspicious of it. And um, their dynamic, these two, and this episode is really great. They have a very fierce rivalry type of relationship, but still kind of respect each other's boundaries in a way and respect each other as strong competitors as well. Um, but in the end, they join forces to bust out of that contaminated room and uncover the mystery as to why everybody is tripping. Um, they find some itching powder and laxatives that was put into the pizza that the contestants ate. And they also have a little help from Izzy, like I said earlier, to figure out that um, they had first year med school syndrome, which I don't know why Izzy knows that, but she's crazy so let's go with it. Um, and this is where the cliffhanger basically happens, where Lashana fake cries to get the reward that Chris is giving out, which in this case for Lashana is a trip to the spa with her cousin, Lashaniqua, which, woo, that name. <laughs> um, and she also shit talks everybody in the car and reveals, and reveals to her cousin that she was fake crying so that she could win the prize. Um, and it's like, wow, wow, Lashana. <laughs> um, this starts Lashana's lie revealed arc for the rest of the season, which on paper sounds pretty terrible, but I feel like it was actually executed pretty well for the most part. And it gave Lashana some realistic flaws and drama to deal with since she's never had to deal with not being well liked by the cast. Um, but overall, I feel this episode really benefits from kind of slowing down the pace and focusing on just Lashana and Duncan for the second half um, as they're solving the challenge in a pretty badass way, especially Lashana because she is kind of the one leading the charge and it sets up one of the best plot lines of the season for me. Next up, number eight on the list is another World Tour episode. It's Ah uh, Drumheller. Uh, but in this episode, both Heather and Alejandro are desperate AF to stay in the game, and that basically means they both want Sierra and Cody to be on their side to vote out the opposition. And so Alejandro decides to, in like somehow five seconds, edit a picture to make it look seem like Heather and Cody are cuddling in uh, economy class. And that makes Sierra's yonder ass want to kill and also vote out Heather, so it works out. <laughs> And so while that's going on in this episode, in the meantime, Heather is avoiding Sierra. Um, she gets trapped in a hole while digging when Chris throws a boulder that gets her stuck in there. <laughs> um, okay, if somebody didn't know what Total Drama was, they would be so confused right now by my recap. Uh, my recap! <laughs> it's 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 so bad that it's a recap. But anyways, um, this next scene that happens is peak cinema. It is truly cinema. <laughs> Alejandro sings a song to Heather about how he's going to leave her there in a hole, but then Heather says, no, you need to get into my holes, and that convinces him to lift her out and save her. And it's all done in, of course, the form of a dramatic rock ballad, and it's just perfect. It is succulent. It is immaculate. And if that's not proof and evidence enough of why this episode is great, Heather pulls a last-ditch vote against Alejandro behind his back, which almost gets, el gets him eliminated until Sierra blows up the plane. Like, hello? <laughs> It's so crazy to think about, but she gets eliminated because of this, because Chris is mad about the plane blowing up, and so Sierra uh, also goes bald, which <laughs> it's a tradition at this point, someone has to go bald, and as epic music plays, she's like, Cody, you have to win for me, and so it's all very epic, and Heather, of course, once Alejandro is like, hey, we won, isn't that so great, we get to stay, she's like, um, that's great, but let me just go burn the votes real quick, <laughs> so... Um, she goes to burn the votes, but of course the episode ends with Alejandro pulling the votes out of the fire, and Heather, you are in trouble now. 
So really, I shouldn't have to do much convincing that this episode is just truthfully cinema, and that's why it's so great. Coming in at number 7 on the list is the epic finale of Total Drama World Tour, which for some reason I think has multiple names, but I'm just going to call this episode Hawaiian Punch to make it simple. Now, this episode is also one that I would say is quite infamous, but it also gets a ton of things right in my opinion. First off, when I talk about a finale episode, I'm usually only talking about one ending or the ending I prefer, so obviously in this section I'm going to be discussing the Heather Wins ending. Um, so first off, this episode starts off a little slow due to them having to have that whole sequence where Cody gets eliminated since the last episode ended in a tie, and I'm a little torn on this because I feel it's kind of anticlimactic compared to the epicness of the last episode, um, but it also allows the tension to build up naturally once we get to the final two sections, and right after Heather and Alejandro sing their song is where shit gets real, <laughs> because Alejandro starts to snap a little bit near this volcano section, and Heather realizes that Cody and potentially the viewers watching the show in the universe, and I guess also us, uh, it's very meta, um, actually see her as the good guy in this scenario for going up against Alejandro. And even though Heather is a vicious and cutthroat character, we can obviously see here that her face lights up <laughs> when Cody says this to her, and it really shows some of her hidden depth as a character, um, that her home life and upbringing influence her to be nasty, and that deep down she does want to be good, which we also saw introduced in the TDI hour-long special. And after that comes the best scene in the entirety of World Tour, and one of the best in the entire series. I keep seeing that a lot in this video, but trust me, it's true. Heather tricks Alejandro into thinking that she is absolutely distraught at the thought of them never being able to see each other again, and she uses his love for her against him to have them kiss before she absolutely wrecks his shit and sends him down the mountain on the ice cube. And all of the eliminated contestants cheer for her as she triumphantly explains that a million dollars is way better than some hot Spanish guy. Uh, she throws her pineapple dummy into the volcano next and wins the season and the million dollars as all of the contestants who used to despise her come together and actually celebrate her victory. But we do need to discuss the elephant in the room, uh, which is that after winning her money, Heather is attacked by a feral Ezekiel who steals the case and tumbles into the volcano, all just to make one big Lord of the Rings reference. Now, this scene polarizes a lot of people and it polarizes me too because I really don't know how to feel about it. On one hand, it does add to the whole epic atmosphere of the finale, but at the same time, it is strangely cruel to Ezekiel, who really did not deserve any of this, and Heather also loses her money, um, that she worked really hard for, and it's really satisfying to see her win. Uh, but I do actually excuse the latter part, because if you think about it, Heather didn't really she did work hard for the money, um, but she didn't really learn to not be a horrible person. She's still pretty mean. And so I think Heather overcoming Alejandro and proving that she can be the hero of the story is enough of a reward uh, for her that losing the money is not really a big deal. Um, I do understand that some may be super pissed about the Ezekiel stuff, but personally, it doesn't ruin the episode entirely for me, but I did have to put it lower on the list for some of these reasons. Um, but overall, this episode definitely shows to me that the writers and producers of the show were trying to make something of quality. Even if fans dislike a lot of how the season was handled, it still is the most popular season in the fandom, and I do believe that this is because they put a lot of effort into the season, and when they were writing it, they were thinking, okay, how can we make this the most epic and best season of Total Drama? And um, So to me, even with some of its flaws, this episode does rank very high for me because of how personal, or how purposeful it feels, and how they were really tying up the loose ends and really caring about the story, especially Heather's. And also, I do actually really like the ending with them running away from the volcano and Heather screaming about how she deserves her money. I've heard some people say it ruins the whole episode, but I honestly don't know how else it would have ended the episode really. So, Next up on the list at number 6, we're keeping the hype train going. It's Numbskull Island from the Total Drama Reboot, uh, which is the fourth episode. And in this episode, um, it's I mean, it's basically almost perfect. It gets everything right for the most part. We've got this super fun capture the flag type challenge that allows the characters to show off their personalities and quirks based on how they want to play the challenge and we get to see some uh, unique strategies to put it lightly and some animosity of course with Emma trying her hardest to kill Chase and a twist is also added where MK um, sneaks into the little control room when hiding from Scary Girl and through this she's able to cause some absolute chaos by messing with the shields. And it was super hyped to watch it when it first got leaked, the episode, like, I was on the edge of my seat. Because my sister and I were worried that Chris was going to disqualify MK's team from winning the challenge since she was messing around with the shields. So I'm glad that didn't happen, but <laughs> there's this super funny scene where MK uses the speakers to call Emma over to one of the pop-up shields, which launches her across the entire field, basically. 
and allows her to get the skull um, with Z's help, of course, because he sprays Emma all the way to Chris. Um, but anyways, even with this, MK's team also thinks that she ghosted them for the entire challenge and she didn't do anything to help, um, except for Emma, of course. And um, this whole situation right here, this moment, is what caused some of them to trust Julia over MK in episode 6. I'm telling you, like, it's good writing, okay? If MK didn't mess up in this episode, then she wouldn't have gone. She wouldn't have gotten eliminated in episode 6. They would have trusted MK over Julia. And um, I haven't even talked about the other team. What's their name? <laughs> it, has, it has something to do with fish. It's like, oh, it's the Ferocious Trout. That's what it is. Um, I believe this is the episode where Priya starts training Millie and encourage them, encourage, encourages them to be in an alliance. Uh, Priya is quite forceful about it, as she is. Um, so there's a good development for them there. And it's a great setup for the relationship in the season, especially with the twist at the end that Millie betrayed Priya's trust and voted out Scary Girl instead of Ripper like they said they would. And um, it's a bit questionable on Millie's part, but it does add some really nice drama and tension. And it does make sense why she would want to vote out Scary Girl instead, since she was trying to kill everybody with the jackhammer this episode. And, oh yeah, did I forget to mention that? <laughs> uh, Scary Girl rides around on a jackhammer this episode. She gets carried away and ends up attacking her own teammates. And this gets her the boot, fairly so. Um, but in the meantime, it's a great centerpiece for the episode in a way. Um, like, if you get it, you get it, okay? It's super entertaining and a blast for me. It was expected because it was in some of the advertisements, but it met my expectations, definitely, and went above and beyond, even. Uh, she also takes a special liking to Damien in this episode because she says that his dreams are delicious. Um, this is where the delusional scary girl ex-Damien shippers come out of the woodworks, but anyways. Um, I also surprisingly like Ripper in this episode. Um, he acts as a very tired and fed-up leader for his team, and he's like, okay, if you guys can't do this, then I will. So he grabs Priya, uses her as shield, and Plungerface is born, the best total drama character of all time, Plungerface. But yeah, the only problem I have with this episode is also with Ripper, where he farts on the marshmallow and then eats it at the elimination ceremony. And I wish those words did not have to come out of my mouth, but sadly they did. Um, Ripper also gives me hope, and then he does something disgusting, but <laughs> I really, what else can we expect? But yeah, overall, this episode is an absolute riot. The challenge is great. Both teams are at their best. Uh, we have good development for the, some of the characters. We have a fantastic elimination where Scary Girl threatens everybody and then skips off like she didn't just say some demented shit. So yeah, really, what is there not to like? All right, guys, for this next one, we're entering into the top five. I hope you're all excited and hyped because fifth place on the list is something that I'm a bit embarrassed by. It's Niagara Brawls from World Tour. Now listen, 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 listen. We all have to have that one episode we defend, okay? It might not be that popular and nobody talks about it, but you've got to put it in the top five just to shock the viewers. <laughs> no, but really, I do love this episode. It's just a fantastic episode to watch, like a chill episode to watch. Um, I could just watch the entire episode solo if I feel like it, and it'll be a good pick-me-up if, if I've had a bad day. Um, this is a wedding episode, so the contestants get put into marriage pairs, which allows them to hyper-focus on the dynamics of each of the pairs, and pretty much all the pairs snap like... Blaney and Owen <laughs> together, like, it's so genius, like, uh, Blaney is hilarious in this episode, this is where she's introduced and she does her whole song, it's amazing, I love that song, the, se the entire sequence is so funny to me, and I like that it's a parody of that, um, awful Fergie song, um, and listen, I don't want the blondie haters to come out of the woodworks like cockroaches, okay, just let me have this, okay, we all have that one character, and Blaney is starting to turn into that character for me, although she has stiff competition from Sugar, um, in this episode, we also have Duncan and Courtney being forced to cooperate with each other to eventually, somehow, by a miracle, win the challenge. Um, some might find this annoying, this whole dynamic, but I like it. I think it's peak entertainment, and I actually kind of love seeing Duncan fighting back at Courtney after all the shit he went through um, in action, like the 50-page letter about how horrible he is and the, all the things he needs to change. And yes, by the way, I know that he cheated, so I'm not saying he's an angel, but it's just nice to see the two on an even playing field. Uh, Heather and Alejandro are also fantastic in this episode, as per usual. Let's not get it mixed up. Um, but, like, let's give them a hand, please, and let's applaud them. <laughs> uh, but really, they are the best. They are at their best in this episode. It is one of their best. And obviously, part of the appeal of Alejandro and Heather is equal parts their rivalry. Rivalry? I can't even speak because this episode is so good. Um, and equal parts their love. So seeing them forced to interact in this fake marriage is pretty peak. They also strategize a lot in this episode between each other, and there's strategy at play. Um, Duncan as well, I believe these three have a temporary alliance in this episode, and it's really fun to watch them strategize in between the goofy moment, the goof, the goofy moments. Um, especially the scenes where they have to walk on that tightrope, like, 
all of the team's interactions are perfect on that. They, like, fall down. They're getting chased by the sharks. You know, it, you know. Um, another giant red flag. I mean, aspect of this episode <laughs> is Sierra. Now, I know a lot of people don't like Sierra. Some even hate her. She's a crazy stalker. And if the genders were swapped in the whole Cody-Sierra dynamic, then it probably would have never been allowed to air in the first place. But listen, I can't help it. The crazy fangirl trope will always be one of my favorite comedic tropes in media, and Total Drama does it completely right in the comedy aspect. Like, do I wish they would tone it down sometimes and have her not literally sexually assault Cody? Yes. But is she also one of the funniest characters in the season? Absolutely. And both can be true. Um, since this episode is formed around weddings, Sierra is at peak delusional fangirl here, and I just love it. Like, girl runs through piranhas, mud, and an entire wedding cake in three seconds flat. Like, she's the roadrunner just so she won't get eliminated in the challenge so she can have her wedding dress. Like, I love some mess, okay? I know I'm problematic. I'm going to be canceled, but I'll go down in history just like Switchy, okay? <laughs> we'll go down together. Um, and, okay. I gotta catch my breath, but Owen is also eliminated in this episode. I watched Wilter about, like, six months ago, I would say, at this point, I believe, is when I binged it, and Owen was actually a lot better in this season than I remember, um, and I did like him quite a lot, but I still do think he overstayed his welcome a little bit compared to some other characters, and um, so I feel like his elimination here is very satisfying and fair, and it's funny to see Blamely fake cry for him, <laughs> like the fake bitch that she is, so yeah, this segment has been way too long already, um, so I'm not even going to recap what I said, but okay, this episode is basically just my guilty pleasure, and listen, if you get it, you get it. If there are any other lovers of this episode down there, please let me know that I'm not alone. Hi, it's me. Um, do you guys remember what I said about the first episode of the reboot? How it's a good introduction to all the characters and all that? Well, Pirates of the Cabajian is like that, but on steroids. If episode one made me really intrigued for the characters and made me want to see where they go and more of their personalities, then this episode had me seated for the characters, okay? I was seated, I was sat down, and I was invested. Okay, uh, I was basically sold on at least half of them here. Scary Girl, Damien, Axel, Wayne, and Emma all have great moments in this episode that basically made me love them from this episode onward and made me sold on the characters. But I was very skeptical of Scary Girl when I saw the teasers for the season, like many were at the time. However, this episode got me to turn around right to the other direction. I'm honestly not sure what it was, but her jumping around, avoiding the cabbages, and especially when she saved Damien from being eaten by the shark, and then explained her reasoning in the confessional, I was sold, alright. I was seated for Scary Girl, and I had to eat my words, saying that she was going to be cringy. I know some people feel that way, but it could not be me. Um, anyways, time to stop talking about Scary Girl for once and talk about some other characters. Um, Damien continues being very confused in this episode, as per usual, <laughs> and he's terrified of everything, but we also get to learn that he's a very big chemistry nerd, and that he has a heart of gold when he returns Millie's notebook to, notebook to her after River stole it. Uh, we also have Axel, who, despite her very sad elimination that made me cry for three days straight, uh, she kicked River's ass in this episode, sending him flying off the ship. And despite being very aggressive, I hope we get to see more of her leadership in Season 2, actually, because... During the challenge, it did seem like she actually cared about the team. Ripper just pissed her off and she gets too aggressive. So if Ripper isn't pushing her buttons, and maybe if um, Priya gets eliminated, she will be the de facto team leader in Season 2, maybe? I would like to see that. I would like to see more of her leadership skills. Um, we've also got Wayne and Emma, who I want to talk about real quick. Uh, Wayne proves that he has real leadership skills um, as well, and I really fell in love with his voice acting this episode. Emma is also on her unhinged shit, trying to kill Chase, and we get to see her iconic dancing in this episode as well, which I love. Um, I don't think anyone else is as obsessed with Emma's dancing as I am, but anyways, um, she's trying to aim for Chase in this episode with the cabbage, and unlike usual, it actually works out great this time, because they win the challenge due to this strategy. And speaking of the challenge, by the way, I love this challenge idea. It's fast-paced, but in a really great way. The animation for the water and the ship itself was amazing and a treat for the eyes. I was really surprised by that. And um, the characters get to showcase a lot about themselves because of the whole setting for this episode. And it was just a very exciting challenge overall, and I thought it was really well done. Probably one of the best in the series, honestly. Probably one of my favorites. Um, Chris and Chef also have a surprisingly great dynamic in this episode. Um, I know not everyone is a fan of Chef's new personality in the reboot, but I think this episode sold me on it pretty well. Um, the parrot scenes were a riot as well, and I want that parrot to win season two, but anyways, uh, we've got a great challenge, uh, excellent expansion of the characters, great humor, even Chef and Chris get to have some time to shine, and there's a sad elimination, really, but Axel still ate what she had to, okay, she ate. Next up on the list, at number three, you already know it's basic straining. 
Um, this is probably the most popular episode of Total Drama, if not at least top five in the fandom. Like, it's super famous among the fandom due to many reasons, but mainly one huge one, and that's Dunkney. But hold on, let's back up for a second, because uh, before we get into that, I want to introduce today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. No, just kidding. I'm not sponsored, I'm too poor for that, but anyways, I want to back up and discuss from the ground up why I think this episode has become so iconic without just saying Dunkney, period. <laughs> now, this episode is one where the unique charm of the first season steps in, because in this episode, a chef takes over for the challenge instead of Chris and puts the campers through multiple days of strict military training, and because this challenge explicitly takes place over a couple of days, uh, we actually get a slower pace than even the usual TDI would be, and we get to see some chill, laid-back character interactions between the segments of the challenges, which entirely focus on pretty much <laughs> the killer bass, uh, strictly speaking, mostly just Duncan and Courtney. And I believe this whole setup would only ever happen in the first season, as the other seasons onward focus on a very strict schedule of character interaction, challenge, elimination, in that order, and that's how it is. Um, there's nothing wrong with this schedule per se, but it can become repetitive, and so since this episode breaks up that monotony and focuses on strictly character and relationship building, it sticks out in fans' memories much easier because of that. And before the episode gets into the thick of it with Duncan and Courtney, Chef has the campers competing in these military challenges, one of which is iconically dancing the Michael Thriller, <laughs> the Michael Jackson Thriller dance, which um, I'm not sure... I'm not sure what the reason for that is, I don't know if they do that in the military, maybe I should ask Brick, but anyways, um, Gwen is basically the only member of the Screaming Gophers to get some attention in this episode, uh, she wins the challenge for her team, and I really love to see her casually beast mode the challenges every once in a while. Um, Heather also, <laughs> she has like no focus in this episode, but she and Owen still get me to holler every single time I watch that scene where Heather comes down from the tree and is very proud of herself for landing perfectly before Owen literally and figuratively crushes her dreams. Uh, but let's get back to Duncan. <laughs> um, I love this scene right here. Um, after Duncan convinces Courtney that breaking the rules can be fun, she lets loose and they steal some of Chris and Chef's luxury food items. And I love that little woohoo! <laughs> she yells when they're running away and she's laughing into the night like it feels like a real teen movie in that scene and it's just beautiful it's nostalgic it's cinema it's classic okay and after this they share their loot that um they stole with all of the campers even those on the enemy team and it's just one big party it's fantastic then after courtney throws up after eating too much uh she and duncan share their first kiss and yes it's disgusting that she just threw up but ignore that part and it is cinema uh but this leads uh, to Harold seeing this and being absolutely pissed that the guy who has been bullying him this whole time is catching W's while Harold is continually catching L's, although he does get some W's in the next episode if you know what I'm saying, he's catching some B's, <laughs> but anyway. Harold rigs the votes to eliminate Courtney, and many people have brought up how it doesn't make sense why he wouldn't rig out Duncan, but I'm guessing that his thought process in this moment was that he wanted to watch Duncan suffer after his new girlfriend gets eliminated, I don't know, I'm just guessing. Um, I'm also guessing that behind the scenes, the crew told Harold that he can't rig the votes anymore after this incident, and that's why he just doesn't do it again. Um, but that scene with him burning the marshmallow after eliminating Courtney, that is cinema right there. That's some, like, Until Dawn shit. <laughs> like, that's some indie horror game shit. But anyways, um, in summary, this episode is so well remembered by the fandom because of how unique it is, in my opinion. And there's not really another episode that follows this format as much and basically ignores the challenge almost entirely to focus on developing the characters in a more natural setting, and that is what allows it to be so great in my opinion. At number two on the list, we're almost to the number one spot, but I've got to give this one to another island episode. It's if you can't take the heat, then get the hell out of the kitchen. <laughs> uh, but no, this episode has everything you need in a great TDI episode in my opinion. Uh, we've got a laid-back and simple challenge that still allows the characters to show off some of their skills and creativity since it's a cooking challenge and all. And we've got some relationship building on the killer baths with some pretty excellent Duncan and Courtney scenes, as well as some, I'll bite, very awkward Jeff and Bridget scenes as DJ tries to set them up. They're still charming. Um, and by the way, take a shot every time DJ has an actual line in a TDI episode and you won't be drunk by the end. Like, trust me, you'll be fine. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, the main course in this episode is what's going on with the Screaming Gophers, uh, because despite the fact that Trent and Gwen don't even speak in this episode, I'm pretty sure, Gwen's just pure presence in this episode is great. Like, <laughs> she basically just makes faces at Heather the whole time, but she's still better than Sadie in this episode, so... <laughs> um, okay, so far I'm not making a great case for this episode, but later on we have the Screaming Gophers getting fed up with Heather's crummy leadership, 
as she won't listen to the rest of her team, and she keeps yelling at them and bitching them around. And although the thing that really makes them ultimately lose the challenge, despite how there's poor leadership, is Owen eating the ribs. <laughs> and uh, yes, he ate the entire ribs, and Lashana is the one who puts him in charge of watching the food, uh, but she yells at him anyways. Um, I'm pretty sure that clip has actually gone semi-viral, where she's like, tell me you did not eat <laughs> that entire plate of ribs! And like, that was horrible voice acting right there, but it was perfect. <laughs> and then um, Owen takes the walk of shame over to Chris, who eats the meat and is like, okay, this is shit, uh, and they lose the challenge, especially after he chokes on the flambe that they made, and um, ultimately, the one who takes the fall for them losing is actually Beth, uh, because she supposedly um, took that tiki idol from Boney Island that cursed them, uh, which is why they temporarily lose their numbers advantage and lose three times in a row. I'm pretty sure this is the third time they lose. Um, now, <laughs> Literally the day before I'm filming this section, some of my friends were arguing on Discord about whether it was the Tiki Idol or not that actually caused them to lose, and, and if the curse was real and stuff, and honestly, I really do not give a shit either way, but I'm just gonna say that in canon, the show was trying to portray the curse as real, and they start winning challenges again after Beth is eliminated, so I don't know. I do think the writers were intending the Tiki Idol curse to be real, and that is why they lost the challenges, but really, if you think otherwise, I don't care, that's fine. Uh, but anyways, with all of this out of the way, my favorite part of this episode um, is where Heather's eyebrows get burnt off and she looks tragic, uh, but she yells at Owen to get her makeup bag, and as he comes back with it, he trips on air, I guess, I don't know. He got stung by bees, so like, let a man live. Uh, but Lashana catches the purse and she's tossing it around until eventually it lands into Lindsay's hand, and she, in an iconic move, throws it into the freezer, or the fridge, whatever and Heather gets locked in the fridge, and I laugh every single time I watch the scene where Lindsay is like, oh my gosh, I forgot we locked Heather in the fridge, and Chris just stares at them like, um, what the fuck, and Lashana replies, girl was tripping, <laughs> uh, so I love that entire sequence, and Lindsay laughs about it in the confessional too, um, a little bit of a tangent, but Lindsay's arc in TDI was actually really well done and well paced, I have to say, uh, but anyways, I haven't even gotten to talk about Harold and the bullying arc yet. Uh, it sounds very wholesome. But anyways, I do think in TDI, the guys bullying Harold does go a little too far. But in this episode, I do think he actually deserved it because he keeps leaving his crusty ass dirty laundry everywhere and also won't up to it. He's lying about it. Uh, so they pulled multiple pranks on him. And is it a bit cruel? Yes. But is it also funny and effective? Yes, as well. Um... And the final prank they pull on him is making him naked in front of all the girls for some reason. Um, I'm not sure why the girls agreed to be in on this prank. Maybe Harold is secretly hung or something because they looked like they were enjoying it. But anyways, um, in a weird way, I do actually like this scene. I think it's peak summer camp activities and it makes me still nostalgic for a summer camp I have never even been to. I've never gone to summer camp, so y'all can judge me for being weird, but that's how I feel. And... Um, one random interesting detail I do want to bring up is that after this episode, I'm pretty sure DJ stops bullying Harold, but Jeff and Duncan still continue to do so, so I guess that shows the difference in their personalities, and I wonder if that was intentional since DJ is supposed to be the nicest out of all of them, but maybe I'm remembering wrong and I'm just talking out of my ass, but anyways, um, whew, I am winded, <laughs> I'm out of breath. Um, but overall, this episode has everything you need for a TDI episode to be great. We have important interactions on each team and engaging plots for both of them. Uh, we have a cool layback but creative challenge, and there's also a satisfying elimination, as I believe that Beth pretty much finished her plot here. And overall, number two is a very high spot for this episode, so I hope I'm doing it justice and that people agree with me. But I really do love this episode and think it pretty much does everything perfectly, and it's just a classic. I just want to say, before we get into the number one spot on the list, I had no idea which episode was going to be number one before I started doing the research and watching episodes for this list. Um, but the criteria that I was thinking of for first place, it has got to be something like this in my mind, alright? It's got to be epic, it's got to be shocking, but in a good way, not a bad way. <laughs> it's got to be well written and paced, it's got to have a good challenge, and all of the contestants in the episode have got to be at their best. So really, I had no choice but to make my number one pick for the best Total Drama episode to be Trains, Planes, and Hot Airmobiles from Total Drama World Tour. Now, this is the penultimate episode of World Tour, and unlike most of the penultimate episodes, which means like second to the last one if you didn't know, um, a lot of those episodes tend to be very anticlimactic and strange feeling for some reason. They don't really get it right, like Action, Revenge of the Island, and Pacateo. Um, off the top of my head, they all kind of end like that. 
Um, but this episode keeps you at the edge of your seat, and it even ends in a tie at the end. That's how much it wants to grip your attention and have you seated for the finale. And it really sets up everything perfectly and even supersedes the finale. Like, it's even better, obviously, because it's not the number one spot. Um, now, the first thing that sticks out to me personally in this episode is that this episode makes me root for Cody. Like, <laughs> I do not give a shit about Cody in World Tour for the most part, but because um, he's kind of a floater and unlike Millie, who also floats like challenge or competition wise, Cody also basically floats plot wise as well. Uh, like, he's not really a hugely important character. But I do kind of like that he uh, sort of sneaks under the radar and he's actually pretty fantastic in this episode. Like, he has this whole dilemma where he thinks he doesn't really deserve to be in the final three. And surprisingly, Sierra is actually the one who has to motivate him. And I really love the scene where Sierra meets that other Cody fan who is selling fireworks in the middle of nowhere for some reason. I don't <laughs> just go with it. Um, but yeah, I actually have sympathy for Cody in this episode, especially when in the absolute banger that is I'm gonna make it, um, he uses his beautiful voice to trick me and use witchcraft on me to actually make me root for him. <laughs> like, it's a miracle, honestly, it's a miracle. Uh, by the way, I'm gonna say that um, I'm gonna make it is probably my favorite Total Drama World Tour song. Um, it's super catchy and the melody is really bouncy and fun, you know? <laughs> Um, supposedly it's a parody of Life is a Highway, that's what people say at least, and I can totally see that, it's, it's very camp. Uh, the vocals are a bit messy, like most of the World Tour songs are, but I can overlook that, because this entire sequence is super fun to watch, and the visual, the visuals are amazing as well, like, I really love watching that whole scene. Um, but now I get to talk about Alla Heather a little bit. Um, weirdly enough, I honestly don't have much to say. Um, they just do what they always do in this episode, but even more playful than usual for some reason. Like, they have a lot of banter, and um, watching them on the train and riding on the horses always manages to make me crack a smile. They're also oddly romantic in this episode once they get to the um, once they get to the shore and land on top of each other in classic 2000s film fashion, I suppose. Um, but really, they give us the best of both worlds, and seeing their rivalry about to reach its apex is really fascinating and also a major highlight of the episode. Um, Ezekiel also shows up in this episode, and it doesn't even bother me, like, <laughs> um, he, he, he seems like he's having fun, right? Nothing bad's gonna happen, right? No, definitely not. Um, so overall, I don't want to blab on and on about this episode, because I really think that it speaks for itself. It is amazing, it is epic, and the challenge is fantastic, um, where all of the remaining contestants are basically to force defend for themselves, because Chris just leaves them stranded, and um, Cody really steps up in this episode and actually tries and makes me root for him. Uh, Sierra is surprisingly sweet for once by helping him and not being super creepy. Um, I know some people uh, might think it's kind of controversial or weird how the story ends, how Cody ends up accepting Sierra, but I'm, I'm just going to ignore that. <laughs> okay, I'm going to ignore it. Um, Heather and Alejandro are also really like just being themselves in this episode basically and are fantastic as usual and the song slaps i'm gonna be i'm going to make it slaps <laughs> i even removed the contraction to them i'm having i'm having a seizure right now because the episode is so good guys i'm just having a seizure but um the whole oh also in the boat scene the boat scene when they're racing towards the shore and they're fencing with the fish like it's really goofy it's camp but it's also great and this episode makes me cry, smile, get angry. No, just kidding. I don't think it does. But this episode is basically like riding a really good roller coaster. You don't know what to expect, but you know it's going to be thrilling and you know it's going to scalp you, okay? You are going to be bald by the end of this episode. All right, guys, that is going to be the end of this video. I hope you leave a like and comment if you liked it. And I hope you also leave your opinions in the comments below on what you think about this video, and listen, I know the audio in this video was a mess, but I'm actually recording and editing this on my Windows computer instead of my Chromebook because it's a lot faster to edit the video on this and film it, uh, so even though the audio is not necessarily as good because this video is so, so long, I didn't even think it was going to be this long, I had to um, use the computer, so the audio might not be that good. Uh, but I do have this picture of the Total Drama reboot. Uh, up on the screen and I'm just really proud of how far the series has come even though there's a lot of flaws I'm glad that we even got a reboot and I'm really proud of the fandom as well because listen this fandom is crazy as hell but you can't say they're not dedicated all right so I hope you guys really enjoyed this video and don't get too offended by my opinions because it's just my opinion at the end of the day so if you have a different one I really want you to um, tell me in the comments what your favorite episodes are and I hope you subscribe and stick around for this um, amazing high quality content <laughs> Also, before the uh, video officially ends, I do want to say that I have seen um, episode one of the second season of the reboot that got um, leaked. 
and it is in English, so I actually watched it, and I am planning on releasing a video. Hopefully, it'll come out really, really soon, hopefully before a new episode even comes out, so I can get my thoughts out. I'm just really slow and was already working on this video, um, so I will release my thoughts on that, and I will give you guys the tea, and I will tell you my predictions and stuff, so I'll look forward to that as well.